Hi, I'm Vic and welcome to Geeko Farm, where we do things differently. We're into autumn and winter is coming, but there's still plenty of greens in the greenhouse. Even though we're in the autumn now, salads are still well on the menu again. Even a few brave mustard greens growing just outside the greenhouse. These are awesome in sausage sandwiches. Looks like the olives are starting to pink up. We should be harvesting them in a month or two. With all this nice fresh grass around, that sheep over there has decided it's going to stand on the fence and eat our olives. We shall call her Minty. The rest of the sheep, meanwhile, are doing a sterling job in keeping the grass down between the olive trees ready for the olive harvest. The beetroots are coming on, well, except for the bits in the middle where the dogs sat on them. These are the Jerusalem artichokes, which don't come from Jerusalem and have nothing to do with the other kind of globe artichoke. These are more of a sunflower. Globe artichokes are a kind of thistle. Still, this lot's got to come out. But before I do that, let's have a look in the kitchen. Something's just turned up. Let's see what we've got in the box. Oh! It's an ozone generator. An ozonizer does what it says on the box. It produces ozone out of here. This is just like an aquarium air stone. It takes in electrical power through an ordinary New Zealand here, main socket. And it runs a little air pump inside there and a corona discharge, which is sort of like almost a spark, turns the oxygen in the air into ozone and it comes out the air stone. The reason we want this is because our water from the bore has some kind of algae in it and it makes everything go pink if you leave the water there for a while. It's notionally okay to drink but we do occasionally get boil water notices and we're told that the scheme is going to label the bore as not fit for human consumption untreated anyway. So, it's about time we did something. Well, that's a bit of a bugger. We've got enough tubing to reach from the shed window to the inlet up the top there of the tank, but not enough for the thing to go to the bottom of the tank to pass bubbles up through the water. So, we're going to have to find some more of this stuff. After much prevarication, I've finally got round to clearing out the Jerusalem artichoke bed. Most of the stems are dead, and they're broken down to make compost. You can hear Kanye still at it in the background. Uh, one of his hens is unwell, and he's taking it personally. Some people grow artichokes just for green manure, and as you can see, they produce a heck of a lot of it. These artichokes have a nice white skin, which is nice and soft. This is handy because some of the larger ones I'm pulling out are very knobbly and would be a real beggar to peel. These things grow well in just about every soil type and you always get a pretty good yield. You'll see that underneath the dead artichoke stems there are a lot of late Scottish potatoes. What with the shading from the artichokes and the spuds, the ground's relatively weed free and they grow together well in a tangle. Of course, there's always that growing. one thistle. Let's pull out this. Oh. Yes, gloves might be a good idea. Our compost bins did come with lids, but as we're throwing a lot of stuff in with low moisture content, we leave them off to allow the rain in and keep the heaps moist. It's amazing how much you can fit in if you try, and the addition of kitchen scraps that aren't chicken friendly helps it rot down really quickly. This is the corner by the pool where we drain the waste water to, and it contains a bunch of hardy scotch potatoes and a whole load of weeds. We're going to add some of those Jerusalem artichokes to the mix and see if they can't sort of co-mingle and grow together. You going to help, dog? Hmm? 
You gotta dig a hole. You like digging holes, so. Yeah. They don't have to be very, very deep. Just so that the frost doesn't kill them off immediately. Do they? Oh, God. Thank you, dog. Once you've planted Jerusalem artichokes, though, whatever happens, you've got Jerusalem artichokes. Both a blessing and a curse. Fortunately, there's always Roundup if they get out of control. Now, even if we get a bad case of the zombies, there will still be some food growing somewhere around here, and I don't have to do anything about it. I might plant a few more elsewhere. Mmm, tasty, tasty tubers. Ah, hard work. Time to open that beer you saw earlier. Let's do something with the artichokes. Scrub them up. They're fresh, so they don't need peeling or anything. Slice them. Put them in some foil with a bit of butter, olive oil, our own of course, garlic salt, a little bit of pepper, and drop them into the barbecue. So, one home cooked meal there. Yeah, looks good. So we'll get on with this, and for now, that's your lot. Down on Geeko Farm. <laughs>